is the Journey Told podcast, and I'm your host, Sean Zanotti. I believe life is about the journey, not the destination, to find the journey in every step of the road, the highs and lows, the twists and turns, the ups and downs. It's in that, it's in those moments that really makes life so beautiful. Our guest today has a journey of his own. Ross Mack is a financial expert, and he's also a media personality for BET, for Revolt, and The Street, and he uses his brand to empower people. Please help me welcome Ross to the show. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I truly appreciate you. I want to first start off by saying, okay, you're from Chicago. You're a Chicago native. Absolutely. I'm from Chicago. So look at that. Chicago wins here. You got to love it. Where, where are you from? I grew up in an area called Beverly. Are you familiar with Beverly? I don't know Beverly. Yeah, I'm from South Shore. I know Beverly oh. very well. You do. You do. And I saw that. I'm like, oh, my God. I mean, I already wanted you on the show, but I really wanted you then. <laughs> yeah, we got to stick together. I love it. I love we it. We have to. So let's just kind of dive into your journey. Tell me, how did you get started? At what point in your life did you know, OK, finances, that's my focus. That's my mm -hmm. jam. And I need to help people with it. Yeah. So I'll just first even start from the, the the upbringing, right? Like being from the South side of Chicago, the idea of a career in finance is probably foreign, right? I, I never even, I didn't really know what Wall Street or anything of that sort was, but I did know I had a knack for entrepreneurial endeavors. I was selling candy since the third grade, you know, that type of vibe. And uh, I ended up going to a good high school. I went to Whitney Young. And from there, I ended up going to the University of Pennsylvania where I was in the warden school. So that's the business school. And from there, I ended up going and working on Wall Street. And I think that's truly what transformed my mindset, my ideology, because being one, taking a step back, being at school, it's like 6% Black. And that was obviously a culture shock. But the fact that once I got on Wall Street, it was even different. But the fact that I was able to be in a, be in a facility with people that came from all different facets of life, but all had a different mindset. And that's why I always say, when you start thinking about the, you know, the wealth gap in this country, it's obviously, it's, it's for a lot of reasons, right? We can go back and say, you know, whether racism or uh, different other uh, matters that are played. But another thing is just a, when, when you think about the wealth gap, it's also an exposure gap. So I was very lucky to be exposed to people that were day trading in class when I was 18. That was the first time I seen somebody trading stocks when I was in class. And then by walk, working on Wall Street, I said, you know what, I got to find a way to bring this experience back to the South Side, to South Shore, to Beverly, and to all, you know, inner cities in general. Not that Beverly, the inner city is nice there. I like how you interjected that there. Um, that's I so interesting. Beverly. I want to ask you, what was it like for you being on Wall Street? What was that experience like for you, the day to day? It was honestly an amazing experience. Obviously, a culture shock. Funny enough, I started at Morgan Stanley in 2012. I was on the sales and trading desk. And believe it or not, I was the first Black guy on that desk at that time in general, right? This 2012, you should think it's, uh, you should have more Black people there. It was only like maybe four Black people on the entire floor. And the trading floors, you know, everybody had different desks. Um, there's all type of products, muni products, different variations of bonds, as well as structured products, um, like, you know, commercial mortgage-backed securities, things like that. But it was crazy. It was a culture shock. And it was one of those things that taught me, you know, the the importance of, you know, how you perceive, right? Being a Black guy on the desk, I used to get a lot of, at times, negative feedback, like, yo, this guy thinks he's too cool, he's too cocky. And a guy pulled me aside, like, bro, walk like you always in a hurry, right? Like, I'm walking all cool and stuff. I'm extremely rough around the edges. So what it really taught me was one, try to be the first in, last out, but it was just a different, I it was just a different mindset when it came to thinking about generating wealth long-term where I would just accidentally walk past a senior guy on my desk and he's looking at his 401k and he got over $3 million in there. I'm like, oh crap, okay, all right. So that's that's what's going on. So the idea was being around people who, who, come from uh, maybe potentially a family, grandparents who were thinking about investing. And so it was ingrained in their society. For me, I was the first person out of my friends and family that even knew what Wall Street was. So it helped me start thinking about, okay, what's the next steps? How do we truly build generational wealth? And how do we also 
put it in a format that is easy for other people to understand it. Which leads me to the next question, the sign that's right behind you. So you have a brand that you've started, Maconomics. Tell us about that and the importance of instilling this within the community. Yeah, so Maconomics was something that I developed, I want to say in around 2018. And what it was, was because I make music and I go by the moniker Wall Street Rapper. And at first thought, it's like, what the heck is that, right? And so I got some great advice. I was like, okay, if you want to go by Wall Street Rapper, you got to do something outside of rap and actually play to what Wall Street is. And as a result, I started making digital content back before there was IG Reels or even IGTV and obviously TikTok. But I say that to say I was making quick 60 second snippets of what's a bond, what's a stock, how do I invest, how do I do this? But the great part was I did it in a very easily digestible manner that would also make you laugh. So I would have an inner city person calling me, right? I, I tried to make it similar to Jim Cramer on CNBC, but it's like way more urban. So I'm going to be talking to people that are having, you know, real first world problems, you know what I mean? Like, well, real, you know, real uh, everyday people type problems. And they're trying to understand, yo, uh, you know, I'm a bouncer at a nightclub. I don't have a retirement account. What should I set up? Right. Okay. This is what you do. But um, I ended up doing it and I started doing it pretty consistently every Friday. And that ended up getting me a lot of organic love, a lot of reposts, but uh, shout out to Diddy's company, Revolt. Revolt ended up saying, hey, we love your content. They started reposting it on their platform and they realized at the time it was no one that I knew of that was doing financial literacy content. And as a result, they said, hey, we want to start doing this. Can we do this? They started partnering me with different um, clients, different people sponsoring the content. And as a result, Maconomics was formed. And now as I look at it, it is more of a production company where we work with a lot of other companies in general, that being FinTech, where I have a knack for just finding an easier way to make financial literacy fun and engaging to the audience. Oh, I love it. Congratulations. What a great story there. I mean, it just shows you if you just continue to do what you're meant to do, your blessings will come. You weren't even looking for that opportunity, the way you just explained that story. You were just in, in your flow, doing what you felt you were called to do. And then hear the, the eyes from Diddy and his platform and from there else, here you go. It, it, yeah. it, it's, that's so beautiful. Yeah, no, it, it, I think, you know, what, one of the greatest things is being able to start walking in your purpose. And it was interesting. So I'll tell you, I, I kind of guess, you know, elevator pitched over a lot of my career, but I worked at Morgan Stanley for three years in New York before I came back home to Chicago, where I worked at a hedge fund called Grosvenor Capital. And it wasn't until I got back to my hometown where a friend that I grew up with, you know, you realize we took two completely different paths in life, right? And what I realized was that, man, it's people that I literally grew up with from the inner cities that are not exposed to what I was exposed to, right? I knew to open up an LLC, not because I learned it in school. I knew because I worked with a white guy who was talking about, oh, dude, I'm writing off this and that off my taxes because of this LLC. I talked, you know, I knew about Roth IRAs, not because I was taught this in school, mind you. I went to Ivy League school. They're still not teaching you this type of stuff. I didn't know about how to improve my credit score. These are things that you learn by being exposed to the right people. So this is before the huge social media and the TikTok, you know, stars teaching this. I'm talking just being exposed in the right rooms at the right times. And I realized like, man, if I was exposed to this, why do I not try? Why, who am I not to try to bring this same level of exposure to the people that look and act just like me from and that are from the same place. And so that's what made me say, you know what, I'm so passionate about allowing uh, or, or, or bringing my community into what I was exposed to. So Maconomics came about and it was just literally a go-to place that people felt as though, yo, I could actually learn something and not in a intimidating, you know, in, in an intimidating format. It's just easy, it's fun. I'm gonna make you laugh while also educating Oh, it's beautiful. So people are able to relate to it. It seems as though it's touchable, it's tangible because the way that you break it down. I know that you currently have a Netflix documentary out that's called Get Smart With Money. Tell us yeah. about that documentary and how did that come about? Get Smart With Money. I'm, I mean, I might be biased, 
but I think it's the greatest thing on Netflix. <laughs> okay. All time, right? Like it's it's that. It's like us and then Stranger Things is probably up under that. And then you got Squid Game. Just know we like right in that same conversation. But no, in all seriousness, Get Smart With Money, I find is though to be, and, and the response is amazing. So to give you an idea, the a brief synopsis is you have four families that have different variations of where they are, right? Different degrees of where they are on their own financial journey. But the commonality is they're trying to improve their finances, whether it's learning how to budget better, how to invest, how to uh, get ready for retirement, how to get out of debt, right? So you have these four families and it's a documentary. We're following them for over the, the course of a year, but they're partnered with four financial coaches and I'm one of the financial coaches. And so the interesting thing is I'm working with a young athlete. He's in the NFL and his story is like, yo, I got in the NFL. My first check was 1.6 million. I bought my mama a house. I bought me a house. I paid my age and I paid taxes. The next thing you know, he bought a few other things. He looked up and he only has $250,000 left. And the news flash was like, oh crap, I just literally got cut from a team. So it was like, you know what? Let me now help this young guy change his whole relationship with money. Because that's really what it boils down to. It's like in society, we're taught to be consumers before we're taught to be business owners and just owners of whether the same stocks that we spend all our money in or companies we spend all our money in, you can actually own those companies. And it was very good because it's transformative. It's helping, you know, one of the other coaches help the young lady get out of like over $60,000 in debt. Uh, another company, I mean, another coach was helping another uh, young lady who was literally living paycheck to paycheck was a waitress helped her develop a side hustle and start actually monetizing that. And so what it is, it's just something that every American, whether no matter where you're at, can relate to it because there's someone who, no matter how much money you make, you might be spending too much money. So it's now like, let's get our expenses in line. And so at the end of the day, I think that it's an hour and a half documentary. It, it covers the entire year of all these four families meeting up with the different coaches. And it's like seeing them all transform uh, over the over the film. It's amazing. I love it. How did that come about? How did you get the documentary going? Like, how did, was yeah, that so, a of yours or did you just kind of fall in your lap? Well, shout out to the producers. You had Atlas Films and Part Two Pictures. They did a great job of one, finding the coaches, myself and three other amazing people. Um, and then on top of that, it was like us, the actual coaches, then using our platforms to then find people who needed help with their finances. So we all did a uh, kind of a, a type cat like a, a casting call and from there you know everyone found their different people well, I was able to randomly find a professional athlete which is pretty awesome probably has a lot to do with the fact that I have a podcast with another athlete uh, shout out our our podcast money music coach well go ahead let's talk about your podcast throw that in oh, there awesome so it. I have a podcast with a good friend of mine who also went to college with me he's in the NFL he's been in the league for 10 years now and it's just called Money Music Culture. We literally talk about all things uh, about money, just from the lens of the culture, from the lens of sports and music. So it's, an, it's pretty fun. Can you kind of take us through your day? I mean, it seems as though you have so many different things you're juggling. What's a day in your life look like? Sure. So day in my life is dad first. Uh, I actually take my daughter to school. Well, I'm sorry, both of my children to school now. My daughter would be two uh, tomorrow, and then my son is six months. So uh, literally taking them to daycare. But it's awesome because on the way to school, I film a kind of just a, you know, on my cell phone content as I'm talking to my daughter. It's called Conversations with Rossi. And the idea is talking about what's going on in the real world, what's going on in the stock market, and how to get better with finances as a child, though. So the audience is literally seeing her grow up, but also helping educate them. So in the morning, I'm taking my kids to school. I'm uh, filming that type of content. And once I get home, uh, it's generally, you know, watching the market. I have an investing club called the Maconomics Club, um, where, you know, it's a community of people that are all trying to learn not only how to invest better and how to build generational wealth, but they're also saying, okay, how do I keep my money? right? Currently, we're in the midst of what's probably going to be a recession. So we have a call later today. The question is going to be, okay, how am I preparing for that? And so at the end of the day, we are helping people become self-sufficient investors and long-term wealth 
providers, right? Or long-term people that are building wealth. And after that, I'm dealing with different various content creating things. Like I say, Maconomics is also a, a production company. So I have variations of clients that we're uh, producing content for. So different fintech companies, you get like companies like SoFi, Goal Setter, Early Bird, a um, few other things. And then obviously just really trying to, and I'm sorry, also we got the podcast company. So depending on what day we might be filming something for that. And then, uh, you know, just grinding all the time. What was the moment that you realized that you were kind of taken off on a different level? Did you have like an aha moment in your career? And if so, when when was that for you? Um, that That's a great point. Um, I've always, you know, I've always, you know, put God first type thing. But I, what I would say is that um, it all came with purpose. And the purpose for me was helping people that look like me, right? I look at what I'm doing is honestly just digital civil rights. And I look at the rights in the form of financial rights, because if you look at the statistics, they're saying black median net worth will be zero in like the next 30 years. And so for me, it's like, how do we reverse that? How do we alter that? How do we change that? And what I feel as though I'm put on the earth to do is help educate our community on how to build and attain wealth. Because if you look at from a civil rights standpoint, we're fighting the same fight our ancestors and their ancestors fought, right? We're still marching. We still have George Floyd's, right? We still are marching, right? But the only difference in this new era, right? Now that we have social media and the internet, right? I look at those things as the ability to equalize on certain levels and not just information, right? A lot of our schools in inner cities generally are underfunded. Therefore, we don't have the same education that other, uh, our counterparts would have. And so now it's like, my calling is, let me educate people that look like us on things that are not taught to us. And at times are probably purposely kept from us, right? And, you know, the, the calling was seeing people that I've never met before, saying, oh man, I just want to say thank you so much, you changed my life, or getting those type of DMs. Because another thing I didn't mention, right, I'm, I'm creating content for Revolt as well as BET. And so when I'm creating those type of things, those things are, the, the audience is a little bigger, you know, and at the end of the day, we're, we're, I'm in a position to change lives. Not like, you know, it, it's changing lives in the sense of giving them hope from their financial standpoint, because at the end of the day, financing I mean, finances in general, money in general is something that's really taboo. People don't really talk about that. Like I, I would be like the, the average person, if they ask their mom, their aunt, their uncle, their dad, what's your credit score is going to be a huh? Like what, why, why, you know, why, why do you want to know that? But I'm not going to ask you that. I'm going to say how to improve your credit score. We're going to talk about how to get real estate with also having bad credit. We're going to talk about how to think about retirement. We're going to talk about how you know, putting three, four hundred dollars a month aside could actually make you a millionaire. And, and, you know, once you get ready for retirement. So there's so many different things that I love to talk about, but also just educate the community, because now everybody has access at their fingertips with their cell phones, their smart cell phones. So now it's like, look, we have the ability to go get the information. Right. We, we can't use, you know, underfunded schools as an excuse right now. It's like we, we're able to have these conversations now. You were just named McDonald's 2022 Game Changer. Has that sunk in for you? Have you processed that yet? And where were you when you got that news? I, so I'm so happy you said that. So one shout out to McDonald's. Um, funny enough, my last name is McDonald's. So uh, that's where the Mac the numbers come from. Um, but where I was at when I found out, because I, got, I had to get interviewed for it, I have no idea who was like, hey, let's interview this guy, Ross. But um, I remember having the interview. I was funny enough. I was in Miami filming Get Smart With Money. And I was explaining what I was doing. I was like, oh, that sounds awesome. Um, but the interview process was just like, how are you a change maker? So the entire aspect of McDonald's Game Changes was like, how are you trying to help change the Black community? And you know, my story was pretty much everything I said. But when I found out, it was just amazing. We were able to get um, a grant and just was it had the ability to leverage their platform to only 
amplify the message of what I'm trying to do. And that's just educate. This is beautiful. I'm so impressed by everything that you're saying. It's so, so, so needed uh, in the community, but especially in the black and brown community, as you know. So, I mean, yeah. kudos to you for what you're doing. If there's someone that's watching or listening to us right now, um, what's three tips, three tips you could provide to someone who may just want to get a hold of their finances? Absolutely. Um, if you're listening right now and chances are, right, when you look at statistics, they say about 70% of Americans don't have a thousand dollars saved, right? And so I think one of the easiest things to do to get out or get on the right financial path is starting out budgeting. It's nothing that's, you know, it, it's, it's one of those things that it doesn't sound exciting, but I promise you it could truly change your life because by creating a budget, it's going to not only let you know what your inflows and outflows are, but it'll give you a great picture of saying, okay, this is how much excess money I have left over after the month, after taxes, after I paid these bills. This is how much money I should start putting towards, you know, my savings account meaning, you know, your emergency fund, how much I should start allocating towards retirement, how much I should start putting in just investing in my normal brokerage account, right? But it also lets you know, wait, maybe I'm spending too much money, right? Um, and I think I, I tell people all the time, one of the easiest ways to make more money is to spend less. Mm-hmm. The easiest way, like you can't just walk in your jobs, I mean, your job and your boss, like, hey, man, I need, a, I need a raise. The easiest way is to spend less. So that might be cutting out subscriptions. That mean That might mean eating out less. That might mean downsizing a car. You might not need a car with an $800 um, car note, right? So at the end of the day, writing it down gives you a great picture. I say another thing is build that emergency fund. You need three to six months of all your necessary expenses. What those necessary expenses will be, you'll see that in your budget, right? I I offer a budget template. Uh, You can find that in my bio on maconomics.com. But you could also, um, within that, right, we're talking about we're in inflation is at a 40 year high right now. And the Fed is doing one thing. They're raising rates. What raising rates is a lot of people don't understand it. That makes consumers feel more poor. Just flat out. The reason that is, is because you don't have the ability to go finance a home for 3% like it was last year. Now it's over 6%. So in your mind, you're technically your mortgage is double. It's like, whoa, wait a minute. Right. Um, And then on top of that, the next thing is, you don't have the ability to just, the stock market isn't as high. Real estate values are going to go down. So at the end of the day, and then making companies now, it's more expensive for companies to go borrow money. So therefore, they're probably going to start laying off people. So at the end of the day, it's very important to start building that emergency fund if you don't already have have one, right? Then after that, it's all about investing. And I think one of the biggest myths in you know most communities is, you know, you might have a grandparent or some older guardian that looks out for you, let you know, hey, man, save your money, save your money. And most people say that, but I'm, I'm here to tell you that that's a myth because saving your money, you're still losing your money. And by saving your money, you own, and by literally putting it under your mattress or putting it in your bank account, the reason I say you're still losing your money is because of one thing called inflation. We just talked about it. We had a 40-year high. Inflation right now is at 8%. So what that means is means the, the average price of goods costs 8% more this year than it did a year ago. So that means that having money, your purchasing power has decreased by 8%. So to put numbers to it, if you had $100 last year, that $100 will only truly be only be able to buy you $92 worth of things next year. And so that's very high. On average, right, This we're in very high inflated times, but the average inflation is generally 2 to 3%. So regardless, $100 last year is only going to be able to buy you about $97 worth of goods, you know, the following year, right? Or this year, if I said last year. And so at the, at the base case, you have to invest just to allow your money to maintain the pace of inflation. That's one of the things. So learning how to budget, learning how to uh, save for your emergency fund, and obviously starting out investing at a bare minimum so that you're able to outpace inflation. Because when you think about, you know, why, gas for grandparents might have been less than a dollar right or maybe when we were kids going to a corner store with a dollar you could get a lot of stuff you had penny can you had chips was a quarter all type of stuff right but now it's like that same dollar doesn't go as far and so 
understanding that, helping you say, okay, this is why I truly need to invest because a lot of people are scared to invest. It's like, oh, I don't want to lose money. And I'm here to tell you, just purely holding on to your money, purely putting it in a bank account that's not giving you any true return, 0.06% return or something like that, right? You need to invest for that very reason. What do you recommend that someone will, someone invest in? Great question. First, I, I want them to invest in an hour and a half of their life to go watch the Netflix movie, Get Smart With Money, because I literally walk um, Tease, who's the young gentleman that's in the NFL. Shout out to Tease Tabor, plays for the Seahawks now. Um, but what the, the very first investment is owning the S&P 500. And the reason I say that is, historically, it goes up 10% each year on average. I'll say that again, on average, it, it goes up and increases in value by 10% each year. Um, and the reason you start off with the S&P 500 is because it's so diversified. It's owning 500 of the biggest and best companies that spread across all the different sectors in the stock market. So it's going to have some energy companies, some financials, some banks, right? It's going to have some retail companies, some consumer staples. It's going to have the top tech companies, the Netflix, the Amazon, the Googles. It's going to have a little bit of everything, but the great thing is so diversified that, you know, if travel stocks are down, well, guess what? Maybe our tech companies are down. I mean, are up, right? Or if tech companies are down, guess what? Maybe our consumer staple stocks are up. So it gives you that ability to be more diversified rather than just starting out buying a, a, a single name stock and just hoping it goes up. This gives you the ability to say, I get good statistics on my side and on average it's going to go up 10% a year. What has been the most challenging part of your journey so far? The most challenging is sometimes feeling like I'm not doing enough. Um, quite often, I feel as though um, I'm trying to change the world with one video at a time. And it's like, you know what? Rome wasn't built in a day. And I think that's one of the, the things that's most challenging. Um, you know, because when you look at social media, it's a lot of things that will distract you. And it's like trying to help educate people on Look, if you're going to follow certain pages, if you're going to procrastinate, social media is a huge tool, right? But it depends on how you utilize the tool. It can be a procrastinating tool, right? And you're just scrolling away on, you know, the top blogs, or you can leverage it and actually learn from it. And, you know, trying to make a video a day that that help change people's lives is, is something that I would say, man, I'm trying to get quicker. And then another thing is just, a lot of the inbound DMs is like trying to manage that. It is difficult. So I, I need help with that. What do you do when you aren't feeling your best, when you need some extra self-love for yourself so that you're able to give in all these different capacities? What does that look like for you? One, health is wealth. You know, I try to play basketball. Um, but I will say the easiest thing, if I'm ever in a funk, is just playing with my kids. That is just, that's the real purpose, right? That is truly walking in your purpose and seeing seeing their smile, nothing else matters. So I would say that's the easiest pick me up. But outside of that, if you don't have kids, it's just finding that healthy balance. It is finding, you know, how you want to go work out or, you know, things of that sort. Are you spiritual? Do you have any spiritual practices? Do you meditate or use a vision board or anything along those lines for your day-to-day? Um, I, I definitely, I, uh, I pray. I definitely am in tune with God because everything is, you know, God's will, God's plan. And so I definitely get my prey on. Um, I don't meditate as much, um, but I, I will say I'm, I'm spiritual in that sense. Okay. Can you finish this sentence? I am a visionary and a master of helping people understand things easier. Ooh, I like that. Who can control my own? Who can control my own destiny? Okay. I like that. I always ask that question. I'm always intrigued by how someone answers or responds to that. That was very interesting. I need, I need you to answer that same question. Ooh, okay. Has anybody I, thrown it back at you? No, you're the first on, one that's ever first. done Let's that go. to me. All right, so I am a woman um, and a master of my own thoughts mm. and outcomes who can control my own destiny, destiny, yeah. 
Nice. You know what? Nice. We, we control it. That it's is just, true. It, literally, it's all manifested. Without a doubt. I agree with that. That's, that's what I believe. <laughs> I would like to wrap up with a segment that I call tell and tell, which is a play on the word show and tell. What mm -hmm. is something that you can tell us about yourself that you have not shared yet with the world? A secret, if you will, about yourself. I'm very much in touch with my South Side roots. I do a lot of uh, um, hood things still. I uh, I was I feel as I was the first person to eat flame of hots on Wall Street. <laughs> I I understand what you're saying. In other words, you're saying you're still you. You haven't your your core. Without a doubt. Your core. Without a doubt. I'm uh yeah those two. I'm I'm still me. Without a doubt. I'll still keep it south side. Still we got we got ramen noodles in the house still. I love it. Look, I do too. Isn't that funny? Know. You gotta keep, you gotta keep I, it. Even if I, it's it, just something about knowing it's there, no matter you gotta what. Have it. It's, in it's that an cabinet. emergency meal, right? <laughs> it's not a necessarily like you got to eat it for dinner, but yeah. you, it's it's on top of the refrigerator in the event. It's so funny, isn't it? So funny. No matter what, you don't you don't go too far from your your upbringing. You just you just don't. Absolutely it's not. The way it is. Absolutely. Well, if someone wants to follow along your journey or follow along with what you're doing or just what, how do they go about getting in touch with you? Yeah. Once again, um, I, you can follow me on all platforms. That's at I'm Ross Mac. That's the letter I, the letter M, the letter R O S S M A C. And then you also can shoot me a text. That's 773-232-2577. A 773-232-2577. And just hit me on my, uh, you can visit my website. That's maconomics.com. Uh, I, I love, you know, a, a people's person. Uh, and then obviously I have a ton of content on YouTube. You can just search my name, Ross Mac. Might come up under my name or various uh, partnerships, whether it's with Revolt or BET or SoFi, it doesn't matter. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for sharing um, with us. You've been here uh, talking for a little bit here, but I really enjoyed the conversation and the knowledge that you're giving. I think it's so impactful and so useful. Um, so thank you. Thanks for, for being on the show. Thank you for having me. I just want to say thank you so much for extending your platform to help me tell my story, hopefully to inspire others when it comes to getting control of their finances. So I really do appreciate you. Absolutely. And please do come back. I would love that. Without a doubt, if you have me. I will have you. All awesome. right. Well, that is it for this episode of the Journey Told Show. I would like to leave you with words that my father would so often say to me, and that's to be the best version of you that you can be. Mm -hmm.